Hey there nation and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back another episode of Way of the Underhive. This series is dedicated to helping brand new players to Nicomunda build their starting rosters and learn more about the game mechanics of their favorite gangs. And on this episode we will discuss an outcast guild of coin delegation gang for your campaigns of Nicomunda Ash Waste. Since the book of the out, uh, outcasts have actually dropped a while back, uh, you are now allowed to take uh, delegation gangs from your merchant guilds from criminal, criminal syndicates as well as from the noble houses so what I'll be doing is I'll be going through every single one of those different types of delegation gangs and talk about the strengths and weaknesses as well as their play style and also provide you with rosters that you can use to start your very first campaign of Nicaragua ash wastes uh, the ash wastes of Nicaragua have now changed a lot of the game mechanics that involve these delegation gangs and has impacted them in a very large way at the same time now that these delegations can now become the core of new gangs they can definitely operate a lot different than they originally were when they're part of the alliance system. So that being said, let's get started on this video review. Alright, so let's talk about the strengths of actually playing an outcast delegation gang from the Merchant Guild. So the strengths that you have, of course, are potentially it's one of the most powerful starting gangs in a campaign to use a delegation gang. And the reason why is because a lot of these delegation gangs start off with excellent equipment and skills for almost all their fighters right from the start. So that's actually one of the nice ways about that. You can start with better weapons, better equipment, better skills, and in some cases even better stats with some of your fighters than your opponents will, which gives you a really good edge at the beginning of a campaign. At the same time, you can also take advantage of the new weird disciplines that came out from the uh, book of the uh, outcasts and you can actually use those weird disciplines out in the ashways as well so that part is really cool too now probably the biggest strength that's actually impacted out outcast delegation gangs the most has probably been the access to vehicles especially vehicles with heavy weapons and special weapon options on those vehicles some of these delegations actually really suffered from things like lack of heavy weaponry or speed or maneuverability or the case may be so vehicles with these heavy weapons really give these delegation gangs a real uh, advantage out in the ash waste of Nicaragua. So now that we're done talking about the strengths of playing a delegation gang, let's go and talk about the weaknesses. All right, so perhaps the biggest weakness of actually playing a delegation gang that's an outcast gang is that you cannot take any alliances whatsoever. If you decide to use the delegation as the core of your gang, no alliances uh, are available to you. So for example, if you're a merchant guild uh, delegation gang, you can't take criminal alliances or noble house alliances and vice versa for all the other ones as well. So that's one of the biggest weaknesses of playing a delegation gang. If you really like using alliances to help your gang out, this might not be the one for you. However, though, like I said before in the strengths, it does give you a leg up in the actual beginning of a campaign because you have better fighters, better equipment, and better skills. Now, one of the weaknesses of this game, of course, is that if you decide to play WYSIWYG, WYSIWYG, which is an acronym for what you see is what you get type of gangs, this can be quite pricey, in my opinion. And the reason why is because, for example, if you were to play a Nautican siphoning uh, delegation, for example, as the core of your gang and you want to buy the forge world miniatures in order to fill that gang those four world miniatures can be quite expensive so because of that I would suggest looking for cheaper alternatives or convert your own in most cases a lot of these uh, delegations have not been manufactured yet so you could possibly do that but that's just something you might want to take into account me of course I would never actually do that I would just convert my own or find alternate ways to get cheaper miniatures and that's the thing I would keep in mind when I would be playing a delegation gang at the same time these gangs are also very expensive to field in terms of credits uh, these delegations like I said have a lot of skills a lot of weapons better stats and you're gonna pay for those uh, for example I think the cheapest of the delegations starts off at like 540 credits I believe uh, so because of that it's gonna be very very expensive for you to fill these fighters but that's the way it goes and lastly probably the biggest weakness of actually playing an outcast delegation gang is that you do have to be aware of the balance bad wagon a lot of balance bad wagon types will scream overpowered or game breaking or unfair and so on and so forth but of course once again just ignore those immaturity of those players drink the salt of their tears and just use that to power yourself and destroying your enemies so these are some of the strengths and weaknesses involved in playing a delegation gang all right, so when it comes to delegation gangs, once again, you get to pick from merchant guilds, criminal syndicates, or noble houses uh, and use those delegations you get from those alliances to form the core of your gang. Leaders also get archetypes and affiliations depending on what delegation you choose. Also, champions also get archetypes as well. So that allows for a lot of customization for your different uh, members of your delegations depending on the affiliations and the archetypes that you choose. Now, once again, remember, archetypes depend on what kind of primary and secondary skills your champions and your leaders receive, while affiliations uh, 
usually determine what kind of weapons and equipment you can get from the starting list, if not from the trading post as well. At the same time, the nice thing about these delegations is that the members of those delegations gain experience and they can purchase weapons and equipment over time, just like any other gang. So that part is really, really cool. And once again, I have to make sure I stress this a lot. Uh, if you decide to take a delegation outcast gang, you cannot make any alliances whatsoever in the future. So just be aware when that actually happens and keep that in mind. Alright, so the last thing we're going to do real quick is talk about which specific merchant guilds you can actually take delegations for in order to create your outcast gang. So there are five delegations from the guild merchant guilds that you can actually use to make your core of your gang. If you'll notice, the Guild of Iron is not on here, and the reason why is because the Guild of Iron consists of D3 plus uh, 2 Hive Scum, so they really didn't have any unique delegations for them. However, from the list that you can choose from, you can either choose the Pyromantic Conclave to be the core of your gang, you could use the Nautican Siphoning Delegation to be the core of your gang, you could use the Slaver Entourage from the uh, Slaver's Guild, the Corpse Harvesting Party from the Corpse Guild, or the Toll Collectors from the Guild of Coin. And depending on which of these delegations you choose will form the core of your gang, as well as what skills and weapons and equipment they have. Now it should be mentioned that whatever war gear, equipment, and weapons that these uh, delegations have you can also use those items to outfit your um, outcast champions as well as your hive scum uh, with those same weapons as well so if you can't get things normally from the training pose or from the starting lists you can get it from there because purpose of the fact that your delegation can share those materials with the rest of your gang as well so now that we're done talking about the delegation gangs as well as the merchant guild delegation uh, delegations you can choose from let's go ahead and talk about your specific merchant guild on the next slide so in this video, we'll be talking about the toll, co uh, toll collectors. These are the delegation that's given by the Guild of Coin for your Merchant Outcast gang. Now the toll collectors, their delegation is going to cost you a grand total of 520 credits in order to fill these guys. Now on the surface, this delegation may like seem like a, like a horrible option to take. All right, and the reason why that was the case is because when you looked at the alliance system, these guys really didn't really provide a lot for your gang in terms of the alliances. Most often than not, you took the toll collectors from the Guild of Coin, not necessarily for the fighters they provided but because of the strategic advantages received in terms of receiving additional buffs for scenario selection as well as for increasing credit values for your gang. But now that you take away that alliance system and realize this is actually the core that will be used for your gang and you build a gang around it, you actually have some really powerful abilities associated with the Toll Collectors. So let's go ahead and talk about that real quick. So first of all, you get the Overseer ability with your leader, which was really awesome. Now originally you could have only used your leader's Overseer ability on the members of the delegation during the alliance. They couldn't use their Overseer ability for the gang that was hosting them. But now since this is actual a gang, you can use it to all your fighters as well. At the same time, your champion, which is the skill Input also has access to plasma pistol what that means that now the members of your gang because the delegation gang can also easily buy plasma pistols for the rest of the fighters as well which is not available in the starting lists for a lot of the members of the hive scum from the book of the outcast so that's going to really help you out be able to get those guys too at the same time you also get access to two long rifles in this gang now, because you're playing out in the Ashways, long-range weapons like long rifles are going to be absolutely king because unlike when you fought in battles in Zone Mortalis or in the Underhive, there was a lot of cramped space. There wasn't all that much large avenues of fire or lanes of fire. It was just really kind of cramped and more like close quarters combat. Now that you're in the Ashways and there's not that much terrain blocking your field of visions, you have huge scathes of land that you can actually open fire through, and so having these long-range weapons could be really helpful. At the same time, because you have these long rifles in your delegation list, you can also purchase these for your original fighters as well, which is really going to be nice. So having those long rifles and those plasma pistol, huge advantage. And if you kit out this delegation correctly, with the rest of the outcast champions and the outcast hive scum that you actually put in this group it could be a really deadly core for a gang and we're going to talk about exactly how you can use this delegation gang to make it extremely deadly out in the ash wastes so the very first fighter we're going to talk about is the leader of the toll collectors which is the master of coin this is going to be the leader of your gang as well so this fighter stats they have five inch movement characteristic four plus weapon skill four plus plus skill they have three strength three toughness they have two wounds three plus for initiative they have one attack they have six plus leadership five plus uh, cool seven plus willpower as well as five plus intelligence now when it comes to the master of coin the master of coin is actually when you use the archetype to choose for this gang i suggest you go with the mastermind archetype and the reason why i would suggest going with the mastermind archetype is because you can use the fixer skill for additional credits you could also use ballistics expert if you want to later on to take really good intelligence checks to make uh, additional uh, bonuses to hit for your weapon especially if you get this guy out with a better longer range weapon later on in the campaign at the same time you have access to medicaid skill to help reroll for wounds and you could also trade for better things as well 
And plus, narratively speaking, the Savant skill, which actually falls under Master of Coin, works actually pretty good for these guys. In addition, they also get Cunning too, as a primary skill, so you could actually use that in order to do additional horrible things to your enemies. But for me though, I find that Fixer skill probably works the best because you want to generate additional credits for your gang so that way you get better weapons and equipment for the gang as time goes on. Now when it comes to the Master Coin, the Master Coin actually has some decent combat specs, but the nice thing about these guys is that they actually have really good psychology stats with those Leadership, Intelligence, Cool, and Willpower stats. Now, those psychology stats originally were not as important back when this is only a delegation to use for allies because you just use them for allies and you actually use your original gang leader to do all that stuff. But now that the tables have turned and the Master of Coin can now be a leader of his own of their own gang, it's really, really important. It's going to really help you out a lot with this. So because of that, it's one of the things you want to look out for when it comes for the Master of Coin. Because having those really good leadership stats is vitally important for leaders because you could use those same psychology stats for your fighters as a campaign develops as well. Now aside from that, the weapons and equipment that the Guild of Coin, uh, the, the Master of Coin actually starts off with is actually not that bad either. You start off with a last pistol for shooting as well as a power knife for close combat. You also get a gun skull for that additional shooting attack from your last pistol and you also get a displacer field. Now, when it comes to the last pistol, there's nothing home to write home about, but you can easily upgrade the last pistol with hotshot glass packs and also different Vansar things like focusing crystals and so on. So because of that, you can actually increase the lethality of your last pistol. A power knife is good to use in close combat. It does have the power trait, so because of that, it can only be parried by powered weapons, so you're going to be doing pretty good there. Gun skulls are kind of nice, but it's just use useful just to like spam some additional shots. And the displacer field is also nice too because you get that 4-up ward save uh, whenever you use it. Now, granted, you do get displaced with that forward up ward save that number of inches from the strength of the attack which could be bad because it can knock your guy off your vehicle for example but it's actually not bad to start off with especially since you're getting it for free with your fighter now my suggestion to you is to keep using these weapons to protect your leader from harm and they're mainly mainly used for self-defense only and that's how you should really use it for the most part and the reason why that's the case is because your leader of the master coins could take more of a supporting role rather than an action role like shooting or close combat for example now this fighter does come with escape artists which is good for defense when being attacked in close combat so that's really going to help out as well but perhaps the most powerful ability this person's going to have is the overseer ability overseer ability allows you to do double sets of activations for your fighters and putting double sets of activations on grovelers who can use that to shoot with their long rifles twice is going to be extremely deadly or if you kit out your skin flint in a specific way like you give them like gunslinger for example and give them gunfighter ability they can shoot up to four times with their pistols or an outcast champion with a special weapon of some sort the list goes on what you could use it for so that's what you're really going to use your leader for for the master coin is to spam that overseer ability use the equipment that they've come with in order to protect themselves so that way they don't get eliminated because trust me once your opponent realizes that the master coin has his overseer ability they're going to be the target of everything they can throw at him just to stop those double activations so afterwards, you go to your very first champion for your delegation, and that is the Skin Flint. So let's go and talk about this person's stats. So they have a 5-inch movie characteristic, a weapon skill and blister skill 4+, they have 3 strength, 3 toughness, 1 wound, they have 4 plus initiative, 1 attack, 7 leadership, 6 cool, 7 willpower, as well as 6 intelligence. So when it comes to the Skin Flint, the Skin Flint's kind of interesting because originally people didn't like the Skin Flint all that much because they didn't really bring a lot to the table and during the alliances but because you can customize your skin flint with different archetypes it's actually a very viable champion so even with the one wound that they actually have now when it comes to the skin flint i would highly suggest that you go with the gunslinger archetype and specifically focus on the gunfighter skill and the reason why that is the case is because of the weapons and equipment this person actually has and for a champion they do have some pretty decent stats for combat especially when it comes to shooting and close combat so they're doing pretty fair there Yes, they only have the one wound, but if you kit these guys out correctly, though, it's not going to be much of a problem. And the skin flick could actually be a really valuable member of your gang. And the reason why that is the case is because the weapons and equipment that the skin foot automatically comes with. So they come with mesh armor, which we give them a 5 up armor save, which is really good. But at the same time, though, they also come in with the plasma pistol. Plasma pistol is a very powerful, close range shooting weapon with 5 strength 5. They got good AP as well as damage characteristic. Now, they only come with one of these weapons and a fighting knife and a cult icon, but because you can customize the equipment these guys take, you can easily get two plasma pistols very, very easily. So because of that, that means now that your skin flint, when combined, with the gunslinger archetype give him gunfighter ability now you can shoot both those plasma pistols and shooting actions so you get two plasma pistol shots you throw overseer on him from the master coin this guy gets four plasma pistol shots as this guy levels up if he gets the skill to get fa uh, fast shot ability that means he can get four shots off of his pistols 
and eight shots if you use the overseer ability on him all used in close combat which can make this guy super deadly not to mention you can also easily purchase plasma pistols now for your outcast champions hive scums because it comes on your starting roster so that part is really cool now line low is pretty cool as a skill that this guy comes with because if you get pinned you can take cover which is really nice as well and you can lay down and you know remain out of being shot at now the nice thing about that is you can use that ability on your vehicles because your vehicles actually do kind of count as cover so because that you could use that to kind of hunker down not get shot at and then pop up and let them have it with your plasma pistols which is actually kind of cool giving you two shots right off the bat now fighting knife of course is okay and the cult icon is nice for that two member group activation so that part's kind of nice as well in my opinion when it comes to the skin flint the skin flint's probably going to be one of two ways you want to use this guy either one you want to use him as a bodyguard for your master of coins your master of coin can spam that overseer ability on this fighter so they get multiple shots for plasma pistol and protect them at the same time or you could use him as a leader of a um, of assault fire team because they got that larger group activation from the cult icon so it's really really up to you and like i said purchasing that second plasma pistol to spam gunfighter will be very very useful in combat both in shooting and in close combat as well and at the same time you can also purchase that for the members of your gang as the campaign develops all right so the last fighter we're going to talk about now are your two gangers that actually come with your delegation these are your grovelers so when it comes to their stats they got a five inch movement characteristic they have a five plus weapon skill which is not all that great but they have a four plus ballista skill they have three strength three toughness one wound four initiative one attack they have eight leadership eight uh six cool eight willpower as well as seven intelligence so these guys are your gang level fighters you get two of these guys right off the bat and they'll make up two members of the gangers of your uh, gang now i will admit that five of weapon skill is horrible but they have a pretty decent uh shooting skill with the ballistic skill of four now you might be thinking well commander chiefs gets only ballistic skill four most gangs have that and i understand your concern here but here's the reason why it's awesome the reason why is because these guys come with the option to either take shotguns and fighting knives which are not that great or which is the best part about this they can take long rifles and fighting knives Long rifles and fighting knives are the one that what kind of the kit you really want to go with when it comes to your growlers, especially now since you're heading out into the ash wastes. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, little list, um, when it comes to the long rifle, the long rifle has a range up to 48 inches. They could literally reach across the table and smack somebody with a strength four hit, minus one AP, one damage with knockback. And since most gang members that you fight against have only a toughness of three, that knockback special rule is going to make the two damage when you actually hit your opponent. And also push them off an inch. They can shoot them off vehicles, they can shoot them off terrain, they can do all kinds of cool stuff with this. So that's the reason why it's so awesome that these Grovelers have that long rifle ability. Now, another thing about it too, which is really cool, is that because they have these long rifles, you can actually purchase long rifles as special weapons for members of your gang, for your Outcast Champions, as well as your Outcast Hive Scum Specialists, which is actually really cool, which kind of puts you on par with Ash Waste Nomads and the number of long rifles that you can actually field. Now, granted, they do have horrible weapon skill, which is a weapon skill 5 up, and so that part is kind of nice. So, going in close with shotguns doesn't make all that much sense, so that's why I would suggest skipping the shotgun option, uh, because you can already get those already in your list, anybody can get those, not everyone can get long rifles though, and that's the reason why you wouldn't want to go with a shotgun on that one as well. Plus that 5 weapon skill is horrible, so yeah, while having the fighting knife is cool, if you're putting these guys in close combat, you have done something wrong. Now, the Lilo skill is actually pretty good for these guys because they can take a basic action to go into cover with Lilo. So because of that, they can take cover and not get shot at from a distance or when they're up close and then they can pop up later, later, later on, open fire with those long rifles and actually cause all kinds of pain for these guys. Now, as the campaign develops, I do suggest that you do purchase infra sites for these guys because, of course, your opponents are going to try to do things in order to mitigate your long-range shooting. One of the things they'll do that, of course, is by using um, smoke grenades to do that. But if you have an infra sight on your long rifles, you can ignore that penalty. Same thing in pitchback conditions because of uh, environmental effects in the ash waste. So having those infrared sites are really going to help you to really cause all kinds of problems for enemy. And that's what we're going to take on with the Groveler. So now that we're done talking about all the individual fighters that make up the Toll Collector's Delegation, let's go ahead and talk about the roster you can build to use in your very first campaign of Necromunda Ash Wastes. Alright, so I call this list the Bullet Farm Toll Collector's Delegation Gang. This gang is going to cost you 1,400 credits, so you'll be using all of your starting funds in order to field this gang for your campaign of Ash Waste. So let's go to your fighters real quick. So first of all, you do have your Master of Coin. This fighter's gonna cost you 245 credits. You're gonna give them the Master of Mine Archetype. They're gonna be equipped with Last Pistol, Power Knife, Gun Skull, a Displacer's Field. They also have the Escape Artist skill, the Overseer skill, as well as the Fixer skill for additional credit generation. 
Followed by that, you have your Skin Flint. Your Skin Flint's going to cost you 175 credits. They're going to give them the Gunslinger archetype. They're going to have Mesh Armor as well as Twin Plasma Pistols. They're going to have a Knife as well as a Cult Icon. They're going to come with the Lilo skill as well as the Gunfighter ability to spam those two Plasma Pistols. After that, you're going to purchase an Outcast Champion. It's going to cost you 200 credits. This fighter is going to be equipped with a Gunslinger archetype. Mesh armor, a plasma gun with a telescopic sight to get that short range bonuses from long range shots, as well as the fast shot ability. So, this guy can fire twice with that plasma gun on either low or maximum setting with those bonuses from the telescopic sight. After that, for the rest of your gang, you have Groveler number one and two. Both these individuals will cost exactly the same with 75 credits apiece. Both have long rifles as well as knives, and they also have the lie low ability, so those guys come standard. But you're going to acquire two more Outcast Scum. Both of them are going to cost you 90 credits apiece. These are Outcast Scum number one and Outcast Scum number two. These fighters are going to be equipped with shotguns with solid and scatter shot, as well as frag grenades as well. And after you get them with that, the next thing you're going to do, of course, you're going to spend 535 credits to recruit a Guild of Coin Haulers. So yes, you will be eating into your gang's roster by 135 credits, but let me explain why that's good, all right? So you're going to get a Cargo 8 Rich Hauler for your gang. You're also going to equip it with a Munitorium Armor Container. You're going to also give it Smoke Fence as well as Twin Storm Bolters. Uh, the Munitorium Armor Container, of course, gives you an unlimited supply ammo cache. At the same time, it gives you two more weapon mounts as well that go 360 degree field of vision with those Storm Bolters. And the Smoke Fence give you minus one hit against your vehicle uh, when being shot at. Now, this list is designed to play defensively keeping your enemies at bay by making them take maximum amounts of money at the same time to increase money for yourself. At the end of each scenario, you'll be making an additional 2d3 times 10 credits. And the reason why is because of the fixer ability from your master coin, as well as the value cargo special rule for your cargo 8 rich hauler. Now your gang will have an abundance of heavy cavalry weaponry, uh, caliber weaponry at your disposal. At the same time, you get an additional two up increase on all your ammo rolls with unlimited re re reloads for all of your weapons. Now your gang is going to consist of two fire teams. You have your support fire team and an assault fire team. Your support fire team will consist of your master of coin, your outcast champion, grovelers number one and two, as well as your guild of coin hauler. This fire team is designed to fight from the cargo eight ridge hauler, but can dismount if necessary as you're playing your campaigns. The master of coin spams the overseer ability, and it kind of depends on what you want to accomplish. If you put it on the outcast champion, that person will be able to fire their plasma rifle up to four times on the low setting. That gives you four rapid fire, strength five, minus one AP, two damage shots with a plus two to hit at long range because of the telescopic sight. If this guy decides to do a basic action, oh sorry, if he does do basic action with it. Now, if he does decide to do basic action with the aim, he's only going to be able to fire twice, but still. Having those rapid fire abilities, two rapid fire abilities at strength 5, minus 1 AP, 2 damage, absolute game breaking. At the same time, Grovelers 1 and 2 can also provide overwatching fire and suppressive fire with their long rifles in doing some sniper shots towards your enemy. Uh, they can also be a subject to the Oversteer if necessary for longer ranges. This will give you 3 strength 4, minus 1 AP, 1 damage shot with knockback, unless of course you're hitting somebody with toughness 3, in which case it becomes damage 2. So if you want to reach out and touch somebody with that longer range shot and you spam that Oversteer ability, you can definitely do that. However, in my opinion, the best way to use the Overseer ability, though, is going to be on your Cargo 8 Ridge Hauler's Twin Storm Bolters. And here is why. When you engage your enemy at medium to close range, you're going to spam the Overseer ability on your Guild of Coin Hauler. Okay, that's the one guy in your crew that operates the Ridge Hauler. Now, according to the crew rule with these weapons, it's going to be crew operated, which means this one guy will be manning those weapons to open fire at that. So because of that, it's crew operated, and using your Overseer ability, technically speaking, by doing this, because you only need to give it to the one guy, you have the ability to put out 8 Rapid Fire, Strength 4, minus 1 AP, 2 damage shots with 360 degrees of vision, and a 4 ammo roll for your weapons in case you roll an ammo uh, check on that one. Once again, that's 8 Rapid Fire dice. That's 24 potential shots. 24 Strength 4, minus 1 AP, 2 damage shots, firing 360 degrees at 24 inches. You throw a telescopic sight or a mono sight in these bad boys, and you know just limit that to 4 Rapid Fire shots, this is going to be all kinds of deadly. You're going to be tearing it up at no matter what caliber you're at. And that's the reason why I call this the Bullet Farmer list, because it's simply destructive and it makes it rain bullets with your support fire team. Absolutely dangerous combination right here. 
Now, aside from that, you also have your Assault Fire team. Now, your Assault Fire team will consist of your Skin Flint as well as Outcast Scum number one and Outcast Scum number two. This fire team is meant to fight defensively, protecting the cargo a ridge hauler. However, they can be dismounted if they're necessary, or they can board enemy vehicles. If you decide to use them for boarding actions, make sure the very first war gear purchase you make is for your cargo a ridge hauler, and that'll be a boarding ramp so that we get that plus one to your initiative tests to board enemy vehicles. Now, once again, your skin flint leads hive skill number one and two in this boarding action. And the reason why is because you do have your uh, cult, cult icon. And at the same time, the skin flint's twin plasma pistols should cause all kinds of problems, especially with gunfighter. Uh, you're going to be able to get two of those shots off right off the bat. You combine that with that group activation too from the cult icon, and then your hive skims can also open fire with their shotguns as well. Uh, they can either do scatter shot or they can do solid slug. Solid slug probably is easier to wound your opponent, but scatter shot's also good as well. Just kind of depends how you want to do it. Or they could throw frag grenades as well. And the nice part about these guys, if you use the overseer ability on the skin flint, the skin flint could actually fire their plasma pistols up to four times, which will make it really, really deadly. You give them the fast shot ability as the campaign develops, your skin flint's gonna be shooting those plasma pistols for eight times if they have fast shot gunfighter and overseer on them, which is terrifying to think about when you put it that way. But anyways. So that's the way you could actually get those guys out. Now, of course, as the campaign develops, I would highly recommend you get better weapon choices for your hive scum. Flails will work just as well because you get that plus one strength and they have that versatile trait, which would be really helpful if you do the ride by ability. And that's what I like to call the Bullet Farmer Toll Collectors Delegation Gang at 1,400 points. So in conclusion, playing a Merchant Guild Delegation Outcast games are a great way to add some diversity to a campaign. One of the nicest things about the book of the Outcast is that it allowed us to bring a lot more different variety and different uh, gangs into the campaign system. Got some really cool combinations you can pull with your guild delegations as well as the supporting fighters from your Outcast Champions and Outcast Hive Scum. You can make some really cool things that have never been seen before in Nicaragua. It really helps to bring the whole world of Nicaragua to life, especially when you apply this to the Ash wastes out in the wilds of the ash wastes. It actually makes it really, really cool as well. And just like I said before, you do have some very powerful options with your delegations and with vehicles even more so because now you can put heavy weapons, you can transport them easier, you can get to your opponents. The options that you have are literally limitless on the way you can do so. You're only limited by your imagination for your gang. So my opinion, pick your favorite guild and your guild delegation, head out to the ash waste and claim for profit and pride for your guild and earn your way back into the good graces of the merchant guilds. The only thing you gotta worry about, of course, is that if you decide to do this, watch out for the balance bad wagon because they're always lurking in the shadows, ready to jump at you and to troll you to death with their bitter, bitter tears. So that's gonna do it for this one, you guys. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is valuable to us as always. Also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the greatest hive news related to yours, this channel. That's good for this one, you guys. We'll catch you guys next one. Peace out and stay classy.